friends, welcome to Dr. Paris Doshi's YouTube channel. Despite Anulipa, today we will talk about writer scam or writer dystonia. Today Dr. Paris Doshi sir will be answering all of your questions which was raised by our viewers related to writer scam or writer dystonia. Before going to the main section, let me introduce about Dr. Paris Doshi sir. I believe everyone know that he is a renowned neurosurgeon in India. He is available at Just Look Hospital in Mumbai. He is specialized in stereotactic and functional neurosurgery. But if you are new in this video, then don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for our upcoming videos notification. Okay, so without wasting more time, we will go to the video conference where Dr. Paris Doshi sir will be answering your all of your questions. So, uh, actually many patients of yours are even they are not consulting with you, but still they have raised many different questions related to writer scam on your YouTube channel. So, that's why I felt that we should discuss and give a response to them. So, before discussing to their query, we will try to understand the basic uh, point of writer scam. What is writer scam and what actually make to, uh, how people can realize about the writer scam, that they are struggling with that. So, many people cannot find their problem at initial level. So, yeah, please, if, if you can elaborate a little bit what is writer scam and what are the symptoms for writer scam? Yeah. So... Uh... Writer's claim is a type of a focal dystonia. Basically, this is a medical terminology, but basically dystonia is a twisting and turning of some body parts, which is uncontrolled. So as the name suggests, writer's cramp, it usually occurs when the patient starts to do the activity of writing because it is most commonly seen, writing is the most common of the most common activity of a general population. So it can be seen during that time when the patient is trying to write something, his hand twists. Or sometimes they say that I'm feeling weakness in my grip, I cannot hold the pen properly. Or after writing half a page, then sir, I'll start losing the function of my fingers and the four fingers. Many people start holding the pen in a peculiar way. So the way we hold the pen is this, then they start holding the pen like this, then they start holding the pen like this, so they innovate themselves to see and circumvent this difficulty of writer's dystonia. When the symptoms increase further, so when the patient is writing, let me show you by writing here. So when he, if he's writing, we write like this normally, correct? Without any yeah. uh, difficulty in uh, writing. Now, suppose the patient of writer's dystonia will put a lot of pressure on the forefinger, as you can see here. Hmm. He'll put a lot of pressure on the forefinger to hold the pen tightly. Then he will become slow. Then he starts extending the elbow and moving the elbow out. Can you lift a little bit towards your left hand side? Yeah. So, so there, there you can see that the elbow is getting lifted. Yeah. That is the way the changes in the posture occur. Or they bring the hand too, too close to them to support. So many other innovative things they do to circumvent this issue. And after a little while, uh, they are cannot even, after all these maneuvers, they cannot do that. So they fail to write and they give up writing. And most of them then try to add up to writing with the other hand. And when they start to write with the other hand also, after a little time, it happens in the other hand. Because it is about, as I would like to call it, a rewiring of the brain. The brain gets rewired and that causes the symptoms, yeah. Okay, okay. So now next question that how can we treat this problem? For treating this problem, we require to understand this. Let me go and make it a little more easier for the viewers to understand a little more. As I told you that this is called writer's cramp and writing is the common thing. And because of the writing, the cramps come. But it is not essentially always uh, in the patients who are writing. Some patients are musicians and then when they play that particular organ, say so let's say they are playing a guitar. So when they play the guitar, then the hand starts turning. 
but if they pay, play a violin uh, or if they pay, play a piano, they will not have any. So it is the repetitive task that the person has started doing and does that. When that particular task that person does, that is when it happens. So say, for example, there is a surgeon uh, uh, whom I have seen. He has a writer's dystonia, but it, it is called writer's dystonia, but it is basically only occurring when he uses scalpel. So when he takes an incision, his hand turns. But if he writes, there is no problem. Any task that a person or a profession or a special uh, individual needs to do repetitively, when that gets modified in the brain, that is when it is manifested. So now the correct terminology for that is task specific dystonia. It is the dystonia okay. that manifests only for a particular task. So when there is a particular task, the patient suffers from the dystonia. If the task is, uh, he does a different task, he is completely normal. So mm. that is one of the ways to diagnose this correctly. Many of these patients are not properly diagnosed. Mm. So they do not know uh, what they are suffering from and where do they go. So they keep on getting orthopedic treatments done or some uh, physiotherapy is done. Physiotherapy, rehabilitation do help, but in a limited amount of manner. Okay, we will now, come about this topic next also because many people has raised a question that can we start a particular exercise to resolve this issue at home or not? Correct. So you asked me the question about the treatment. So huh. the basic treatment for this is training, training your mind. So sometimes psychotherapy and counseling also helps. Other times physiotherapy helps, but these are all marginal benefited things. If the disease progress, symptoms progress, these things would not help you to control the symptoms in a major way. At that time, you can take some medical treatment and there are several medicines available which one can take and under the guidance of a neurologist. And if these medicines do not give you adequate relief and it gives only partial relief, then you may want to actually uh, use botulinum toxin injections to temporarily improve the condition. Now, uh, unfortunately, botulinum toxin is also temporary. It will mm. only improve the quality of life for three to four months. And after that, again, it will come back. And when it comes back, the next time the effect of botulinum toxin is even is shorter. So, however, it is important that one tries that because that is the first step of treatment that one should consider before uh, thinking anything more aggressive. Okay. Okay. So we also want to know the aggressive step uh, of the treatment. Correct. So the next step of the doesn't feel comfortable or his life or quality of life is affected. And it will be affected because this usually occurs in the age group of 30 to 50. That is the prime time of your life when you are planning your career, progressing in your career, achieving milestones in your Correct. career. And if at that time, because of the task that you are supposed to do, like a teacher is supposed to write, and if he cannot do writing on the board, then what good a teacher is? A, a, a musician, if he cannot play the musical instrument, what good he is? So unfortunately, this affects the main task which is your bread, butter and livelihood. And hence you would need a treatment for this. We have seen many students who have uh, come to us for treatment and aggressive treatment that you asked, which I will talk about in a few minutes uh, because they want to continue giving exams. They want to progress and they are handicapped because of the writing difficulty and they can't perform well. So we have helped them to perform well and get them well. So the aggressive form of treatment is a form of surgery. There are two different types of surgery. One is called thalamotomy, wherein we make a small incision on the top of the head and with the help of a calculated current given through a small electrode, which is less than a millimeter, uh, we burn certain areas of the brain cells or destroy some small amount of cells which are causing this side effect. Now, other option is deep brain stimulation wherein we put an electrode in the brain and with the help of a current, we reversibly inhibit those cells. Basically, we stop those cells from functioning. So both the therapies do the same purpose. One is irreversible, which is a lesion, but the advantage is that if you have get it done, it is a one-time procedure. You do not have to follow up 
and it is almost 95% successful. We have published two papers in international journals on this, and we have one of the largest experience after Japan. Japan has one of the best and the biggest experience, but after Japan, our center has the largest experience of doing telemotomy for task-specific dystonia. In some patients, when we think that the disease may progress further, the disease is likely to extend and it is started like a task-specific dystonia, but it may become a full-blown dystonia of the upper limb and the side of the body. Then we advise the patient that it is better to undergo deep brain stimulation okay. because telemotomy can specific dystonia. Deep brain stimulation can address task-specific dystonia and if the dystonia progresses, also the entire part of the body or the one side of the body can be addressed with the help of deep brain stimulation. Okay, okay. So as you mentioned in this uh, conversation that you have an international journal, I would like to include that in the description box so viewer can read also. Is it, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, journal can help for a layman person also, sir? Yeah, it, it is a basically about the study uh, of patients of task-specific dystonia that we did uh, to analyze the outcome after a follow-up period. So it describes the selection of the patient, the outcome of the patient, and there is a discussion as to what we feel as to the benefit of the surgical procedures. So it's a technical uh, paper. But yes, patient can uh, consider that if they uh, even do a Google search, Dr. Paresh Doshi and uh, task specific dystonia with these two keywords, they should be able to find those papers. Yeah. Yeah. And also you treated many patients who were struggling with dystonia, uh, especially uh, writer dystonia. And I still remember one patient who came for, uh, who, who, who was from abroad only. And he was not able to perform the guitar. So I would also collaborate that video in this uh, uh, channel. So they can also understand that how easy after right. doing the thalatomy surgery. Thalatomy, he was yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. No, I think it is a very rewarding procedure to me. I feel that it is a thalatomy is a very effective solution and a permanent one. Because many okay. solutions in our medical treatment are only temporary, but very few solutions are permanent. Like for this example, in this, thalamotomy is a permanent solution for task-specific dystonia. And if it is done properly, the risks are almost zero and uh, less than 2% risk. And uh, the benefits are immense. So if the oh. patient gets cured, as, and as I told you, it is successful in more than 95% of our patients. So it is very useful yeah okay so one of the very loyal patient he asked that is writer stem is a disability in india uh, i don't think uh, the indian government or indian law uh, recognizes that but one can apply for a disability uh, from the after the doctor certificate and see what uh, that state uh, because disability laws are different in different states so it depends on which state it is, see, they can do that, yeah. Okay. Okay, so next question, that can one person do a treatment writer's scam at home with the help of physiotherapy? Initially, you a little bit highlighted. So now can you elaborate a little more? Yeah, they can continue. They will have to do physiotherapy because it's a retraining of the brain cells. So <laughs> once you start doing that, it will help you for a better control of the disease. But it is not going to be permanent and you would require some other form of support, either medical or surgical. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, almost I think uh, everyone, I mean, many of your patients asked about exercise, that is any particular exercise available for preventing writer scam or not? I think you have answered already. Um, for uh, getting exercise guideline and everything, they can connect to the physiotherapy. Or is there any specific yeah, physiotherapist like neuro, physio, something is there? Or uh -huh. Most of the cities, major metros have neuro centers and you can connect with those physiotherapists because they have a little more experience in uh, treating new neurological patients. But writer's dystonia is not very common. The typical uh -huh. prevalence is around 5 to 19 per 1 lakh population. So, and 
even though this number is very high, if you translate the actual figures would be thousands of patients suffering from that because of the lack of awareness, it is known to only very few people. So yeah. it's difficult for someone to find a physiotherapist specialized in writer's dystonia. So. Okay, okay. If patient want to, uh, wants to reach at your center, where are you available if you can elaborate? Because many people are in confusion. You are available in Gujarat or maybe you are available in, in Chennai. Many people... Uh, the patient should consult us. Possible to do now with the help of this video, like the way we are recording this video. We can do an online consultation. So it is immaterial where the patient is. This uh, therapy is mainly available at Jaslok Hospital and Research Center Mumbai only okay. because uh, this level of expertise or experience is not available in any other center in the country. Not only that, if the patient wants, we can do an initial consultation online. So the patient doesn't need to travel to Mumbai for a consultation. The discussion and the diagnosis can be made online the way same way we are recording this video. And most of my patients now prefer that because the advantage is that many other family members who are living not in the same place, but different cities can be also included on the Zoom call or a video call, and they all can be a part of the discussion. Okay. And also, I would like to include, if they want to reach the contact number, double nine three zero nine six zero nine six zero, or else they can reach to me also, 9082930358. And we have a special website also if they want to get more details related to this information, neurologicalsurgery.in and also dbsurgeryindia.com. So they can read anything on our website to get more information. Okay, sure. sir. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for your time. So Thank you.